But of course, it's about much more than just how we interact with horses. A significant part of this issue is the flying fox. The distribution of flying foxes is continuing to evolve as they are found in every mainland state and territory of Australia. Flying foxes provide the greatest risk and the most important challenge for the horse community. For Professor Christopher Broder, one of the original collaborators in the development of the Hendra virus horse vaccine, understanding the role of the flying fox in the spread of the virus has been a key concern. Given the understanding that we have about the Hendra virus, which is that when it jumps from bats in nature, it almost exclusively infects horses. And the people at risk are always the people that have access or unknown exposure to horses that are shedding virus. Dr. Louise Cosgrove is an equine veterinarian on the outskirts of Brisbane with a clear message for horse owners who are wrestling with this challenge. I think people need to get it out of their head that, oh look, the, the bat colony is two kilometres away from me, I'm not, I'm not at risk. I think that's the biggest challenge. You know, the Lowood case was a prime example. There was no evidence of bats. Just because they don't see bats doesn't mean that they're not at risk. All you need to get a Hendra virus infection is an infected bat and a horse. And flying foxes just feed across a huge area of Australia. You know, I mean, we have a lot of bats in this area and every night, you know, I would have worries, you know, whether the, that particular bat that you could hear in the trees, you know, might be infected or not. And we've, we've tried everything. We, we know what precautions you're supposed to take, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it could happen at any time, you know, to any horse. I have no doubt the industry would love to see some sort of management of the flying fox population. It'd have to reduce the risk to our horse owners. I think that'd be seen very positively. While control or management seems like the best solution for those of us living near a flying fox colony, the scientific community is calling for a reserved and measured approach to dealing with these animals. I understand the reasoning behind it, and I think if I was living underneath a bat colony, I'd be happy to move them on as well. But I think we need to think it through a little bit more. We don't know what causes the bats to release the virus. We don't want to precipitate that. The ecosystem has evolved so that they reach a balance in terms of insect control and the pollination, seeds dispersion. So if you remove the bats from the ecosystem, for example, what I can see an immediate effect is that a disease carried by mosquitoes, insects, for example, will just, you know, skylock. If you're worried about a disease that's carried by bats, the best thing you can do is make sure that the, the population of concern, and in this case horses, is highly vaccinated. The idea that if you use a vaccine to prevent the initial infection of horses, you'll prevent horse disease, that's one thing. But then in addition to that, you'll actually prevent the possibility of virus shedding from horses and infecting people in the future. So you're getting two for one in a sense. So this has been a long dream of both scientists and the policy maker is to have a vaccine against Hendra. My hope is that we get widespread adoption because this is a deadly virus and we want to protect the Australian horse owning community. We want to protect families and, and kids. Really vaccine is, is by far and away the most effective way of protecting a horse against, against the, um, the disease. And so from a scientific point of view, I think that the more horses that are vaccinated, the less risk there is to people. It's certainly the best tool we've got in our arsenal at the moment.